and the travelers too. Uh, Celeste, I've been taking a close look at your traveler's tool, and, <laughs> and in it you've got words like conchi, cobber, chunder, chuck. Now, these words may be indispensable here in Australia, but, but what use would they be to a traveler who's uh, attempting intercourse in foreign parts? I presume you mean social intercourse. That's how I read it anyway. Why do Australians have sexual intercourse so quickly, you know? The old story is so they can get down the pub and tell the fellas, you know? <laughs> Australian English abounds in ripe comic similes. Humphreys loves phrases like a kangaroo loose in the top paddock for a crazy person, as scarce as rocking horse manure, as happy as a bastard on Father's Day, a veranda over the toy shop for a paunch, and hanging around like a fart in a phone box. I felt rather like those composers of the early, English composers of the early 20th century, Ford Williams crouching behind a hedge recording a ploughboy's whistle. I used to interview taxi drivers, I used to make jottings, I found a lot of these notebooks and uh, of course although I collected a lot, a lot of the rich um, and generally scatological Australian vernacular, I made up a lot of it too. Yeah, a little lady. Tell us what burning social issues keep you awake at night. Well, <laughs> generally I get a burning social issue in the morning if I get one. <laughs> Most of us who go to England try to get rid of our Australian accents if we can, or we did. It's less fashionable to do so now. And some of us actually put on a stronger Australian accent than we really have. Anxiety may be the reason for this because we've always felt, with our accents, rather inferior, you see, to our English cousins. As indeed we are. One champion of the Australian voice with no worries about inferiority is Alan Morris. With his partner, Alan Johnson, he set up Mojo, the first advertising agency to take the radical step of shooting all its commercials in Australian English. There's no such thing as an Australian accent in television advertising, particularly until about 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, one considered the, the Australian public probably ashamed of our pretty grating nasal sort of accent. And the Australian accent just wasn't used because it wasn't classy enough. And it did great. It was so unusual to hear it. It would grate on, on ourselves to hear it. We just didn't realise how we spoke because you didn't hear it on air very often except in comedy shows or to send something up. <laughs> we just started speaking on television and commercials in the language that belonged to the people. And there's 15 million people out there that aren't here. And they don't seem to be too ashamed about communicating with each other. America, you look like you need a holiday. A fair income holiday. In the land of wonder. The land down under. Now, there's a few things I've got to warn you about. Firstly, you're going to get wet. Because the place is surrounded by water. Oh, and you're going to have to learn to say good day. Because every day's a good day in Australia. G'day, Paul. G'day, love. Of course, you'll have to get used to some of the local customs, like getting a suntan in the restaurant, playing football without a helmet, and calling everyone mate. Thanks, mate. She's right, mate. Apart from that, no worries. You'll have the time of your life in Australia. Of course, we talk the same language. Although you lot do have a funny accent. Oh, before you rush out to book your Aussie holiday, call this toll-free number for your free Aussie holiday book. Come on, come and say good day. I'll slip an extra shrimp on the barbie for you. Come and say good day. Obviously, advertisers like Mojo were responding to something in the wind. This new confidence in Australia's own distinctive brand of English is evident in the thriving film industry. Films like Picnic at Hanging Rock, Gallipoli, My Brilliant Career, have not only won worldwide acclaim, they have given Australia's voice a hearing in cities like New York and London. So have the books these films were based on. Australians are celebrating this new confidence in their own cultural identity with a booming literature 
And central to that confidence is the language used by authors like Patrick White, Frank Morehouse, Thomas Keneally, Peter Carey. Peter Carey's latest novel, uh, Illiwacker, in fact draws its title from the Australian slang word for a con man. One contemporary Australian writer who likes to kick sand in the face of respectability is the humorist Cathy Lett. My hobby is people perving. So my very favourite thing is to go down into the suburbs to the pubs and hang at the beach and pick up jargon and, and you know, I'm, I'm a cannibal in that way, that I cannibalise people's dialogue. Now I'm looking for Sunny Richards, who's a really hot surfer, and she's great because she's got no tickets on herself. Oh, if you've got tickets on yourself, that means that you're, you're up yourself. You, you've, you think too highly of yourself. It means that you've put an expensive price tag on yourself, sort of Gucci. And uh, she's a bit worried about me because she thinks I'm turning into a bit of a trendoid. A trendoid is someone who lives in the inner city, wears red glasses. <laughs> so she's going to, she's got to brush up my dialogue. The sound of Australian dialogue is changing. One contemporary characteristic is the speech habit known to experts as the rising inflection. When I take you down to the beach and you meet some of the girls, they talk like this. Sunny will say, oh, I went down to the beach and I saw these guys and they were really spunky. I think it's a sign of insecurity because they're always waiting for someone to say you're wrong or rack off or shut up. So that's why they suffer from it. It's not contagious. <laughs> Sunny, g'day. Hi. Hi. Very good. <laughs> so what's the surf like, Sunny? Tell me. Well, there's a good left suck up over there, but it's a bit blown out, so it's not not, not as best. Now, how long have you been surfing for? About two years. Yeah. And two years. What, how do the guys cope with that? Because, I mean, once if you surf down here, they'd get you bored and they'd break it and they'd ding it up and chuck oh, you off. So they drop in heaps, but So when they lost. drop in, what do they do? Dropping in means they take off inside of you, so they ruin your wave, they drop in on you. Yeah. So there's not much of the wave left. Now, just tell me about the real reason you come to the beach. I know it's not really for the surf. I know that really it's for the great Australian pastime of perving. Oh, well, I think, <laughs> actually, I think the best perv are the clubbies. Definitely. The they've clubbies? Got the clubbies have got the best body. You wait till they get out of the water, and, of course, they've got their scandies pulled right up there. Right up the, right up the crackaroo. So it's just beautiful buttocks oh, all around. Oh, beautiful buttocks all around. <laughs> <laughs> well, Australians and Americans are like oysters and custard. You couldn't get further extremes, um, especially with their language. I mean, I think Americans suffer from vowel cancer. They have this terrible habit of, of adding, of complicating sentences and making them convoluted. And Australians are the opposite of that. We tend to amputate words. A typical Australian sentence would be to say that you were taking a sickie, shoving a few tinnies in the esky, going down the beach, say, with the truckies. When we think about the English, we tend to think of them as plucking their high brows and of feeding themselves the sauruses intravenously and conquering the great indoors, we always think of them indoors reading books. So we tend to stereotype the English, the plum in the mouth and you know, never getting down and getting dirty. We've always lived in the shadow of England and been almost embarrassed to be Aussies. Um, and now that, now that we're getting more confident about who we are, there's been a whole resurgence of our, of our slang. Sardonic, profane and irrepressible, the voice of contemporary Australia has shaken off its cultural cringe. And perhaps no one has done more to internationalise this slangy self-confidence than Barry Humphreys. This is a nice poetic bit now coming up. Little bit of music leaking in. This is a hint to those blokes at the ABC who have been sitting on their...